Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna try to do some maintenance. Uh, I got the mini clip set up here on the on the trailer, and the, if you're not familiar with a mini clip, uh, it goes on the front of the tractor, and you can reach up into a tree. On the big tractor, we can do like 16 feet, and literally uh, snip off a seven inch uh, limb. That's wonderful, love it. And you can rotate it around flat, lay it on the ground, and snip off a tree even with the ground at seven inches. However, I found out the hard way that you cannot snip off a seven inch tree at the ground if there's a steel spike through the center of it. And we really put some damage to our blade. Uh, so today I'm going to take the welder and clean this up and weld a new uh, edge on this and come back with the grinder and grind it off back to a precision cut, hopefully. So the tools we're gonna to be using today are the Hobart 140. The big thing we're gonna to try today is, I've got the Blue Eddy, uh, this is the 200P, I believe it is. Uh, and this thing has been pretty amazing to this point. But if this pulls this little welder, oh my gosh, this is a game changer. This is 2000 watts of power. The Hobart, it shows that it'll use 20 amps, which is about 2400. However, this is, has like a 4,000 watt peak. I am or don't have to weld at full strength. So let's, let's see how this works. I think it's gonna work. So tell me what you think in the comment if this Blue Eddy will work. So this is what we're gonna do. You can see here where I clamp down on that steel post that was in the middle of the tree. Uh, there's a couple of little marks here. There's little, little marks all along this, uh, this cutting edge, but there's a pretty deep gouge right here and also a pretty deep gouge right here. And what this causes is uh, it'll cut a tree off, but it'll leave these little gaps and it ends up leaving the limb hanging up in the tree. So what we're gonna have to do is come back and clean this up with a, a we got, I got a grinder pad. We'll come in here and clean this up, shine it up on both sides. And then we're going to create a little metal lip on the underside and weld a bead across this. Then we'll come back with a grinder and actually grind this back flat uh, and back to the proper cut. And again, this is all hoping. I'm no expert welder and this is hardened steel. So let's see how this works. That's a lot better. Something to start with, I gotta do the underside now. So I could rotate this over, but I think for just this one uh, cleaning, this would be the easiest way to do it. don't want to take off too much right here because this is, it clamps against this piece of steel and that's what for actually shears it off. So we don't want to take any too much off, but I did shine that up so it's clean to weld on. All right, so I think we're ready to, maybe I'll touch that just a little more, but I think we're pretty close to start welding. You can really see the dips and cuts and these little strands right here will just let the limb hang up in the tree and it makes it where I have to like pull the limb down. So I don't recommend cutting steel. It's a, not what it's made for. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna clean this up and I'm gonna use this as a backstop. I'm gonna put a clamp on it and clamp this, uh, these two pieces of metal together. And as I'm welding across here, I'm trying to do my best not to weld to this, but this is gonna be colder and I think it'll stop the weld from sagging. And just, this is gonna be very small, precise welds. This might work. Well, that's true, but I paid uh, 
I think I paid like uh, three dollars for these on sale. So if that's what it takes to fix this, I'm okay with that. If I melt it a little bit, look, I think that's gonna work good. We keep the slag or keep the molten metal from falling through. I'm going to sand me off the of ground. I looked at the edge of the cutter here and I'm gonna say this edge is about one eighth. So that's how I'm gonna set my welder up. All right, looking at it again, I think I'm gonna go with the 12 gauge and we'll go 335 to start out. That's really, the little chart here actually shows you a legitimate size of the metal you're welding. And this is really closer. It's actually between 16 and 12 gauge is what the tip of that uh, cutter looks like. Just so happens that I looked in the bottom of my welder where I keep a little few of things laying around and it's actually got the gauge right here it's going to be about 14 gauge so it's going to be we'll start off with the 12 gauge we'll start off with three 335 so if you've not seen this there's another video I'll leave a link at the end of this video this is the blue eddy Two, or it's AC 200P, uh, it's 2000 continuous watts. It's got a uh, 2000 watt hour battery and it peaks out, if I remember right, somewhere around 4000 watts, which is pretty significant. We run a, uh, a table saw with this the other day and it worked really well. So I'm hopeful that with the amps we're using, this will work. We'll turn this dude on. Takes just a quick second for it to load up. And we're at 97%. Screen's not, not super bright, but you do have to turn the AC on. All right, now our AC is on. And we should be, we'll set this to 35, set this at three. And we turn this on, something should happen. It's promising. Y'all wish me luck, and if I think this is stupid, tell me in the comments. <laughs> sure you will. Well, I need gloves. Safety first. Yeah, I'm, I'm known for safety. Gotta have it on grind or welder, not on grind. I don't know how long it would weld, but that's pretty nice. What we're gonna do now is knock this off and then grind it down, come back, and keep retouching it until we get it. We don't wanna to make too much, if I don't wanna weld this to it, which I could well do. It did make some marks on it, but it didn't weld it. So we'll, we'll go ahead and put our edge back on and start from there. All right, this is gonna be, that, that, that come a long way right there. That's, that's pretty good. But I can tell you, this is gonna be some art into this because I'll take this little piece of metal and use it as a straight edge. 
But I've got some, I got, I got to build up right here a pretty good bit. So the Blue Eddy will absolutely run this little welder. I would, I would try to weld something heavier, but I just don't need to right now. I didn't weld that to the metal again. Let's see how we did. Oh no, I gotta get a hammer. So it is not perfect, but it looks a whole lot better uh, than it did before. I think the whole thing has just been pretty awesome. Uh, I need to check on the voltage real quick and we'll see how much, uh, how much percentage of the Blue Eddy we used just doing that little bit of work. So we were 97% when we started and right now we're at 93%. So, and this thing never, the overheating fan never kicked on. Obviously we weren't, we weren't welding continuously and this little welder's not meant for that, but gosh, this is pretty awesome. So this edge is so much better than it was before. It doesn't have the huge gouges. It is not perfect. And I'm not entirely sure that these little welds are, I don't think they'll pop out, but I don't know if this is, soften the metal around it. Welds are generally harder than metal around it. So the only way we're gonna know if this works is let's go try it. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, I forgot to do this. I'm gonna go ahead and close the features uh, before we switch this over to the big tractor because I wanna see how, how it mates up. The small tractor just doesn't have enough weight or ability, but it's, it's fine to move it around. It has the same PSI as the big tractor, it just doesn't have the hydraulic flow. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's gonna be a lot better than those uh, eighth of an inch gaps. Gosh, that looks pretty good.
So the first vines we pulled down had absolutely nothing to do with this video. My wife said, I want those vines because I'm going to make wreaths with them. All right, let's take a look at this blade. Now, here, I actually didn't do anything. I only corrected right in here where the two big marks were. Overall, it held up really well. It's not perfect, but it's still a lot cheaper than buying a blade, and it's something I can do over and over again. Let's take a look at the stump now. I would say this stump is approximately six inches wide, maybe seven. It's right, pretty much close to the max. This is elm. This stuff is hard and difficult to cut. Look at that smooth cut. That's, that's pretty awesome. The other one is just a little bit bigger. So this stump right here was probably a little bit more uh, difficult, but you can see the shear did a really good job. I had to come in and cut, and I need to. I had to release the shear and push in a little bit further. The further you go in, the more uh, leverage that your cutter has, your shear has. But look at how how good it did. It's a really smooth, really smooth shear. Pretty happy with it. Now all I have to do is bring in the uh, small tractor with a stump grinder, knock these down in just a few minutes, and we've drastically improved this area. 